Welcome into another edition of the Gator Nation Football Podcast. I'm your host, James D. Virgilio, and on this film review, we'll be taking a look at Florida's offense versus Tennessee's defense. A marquee win for Billy Napier, his first win over a rival in his Florida tenure. This game featured a first half where Florida was very productive, scoring almost every time they had the ball, and a second half that was quite the opposite. I'll break down both halves and everything in between. As always, if you like this content, sub to this channel, follow us on social media, check out our merch, drop us a dono on Patreon, and check out our podcast each and every Monday where we bring you in-depth analysis on the Florida Gators. Now, my voice took quite the beating in the swamp on Saturday, so you'll have to bear with me as obviously I don't have my normal vocal power. Hopefully that won't deter you too much while watching the video. And as always, the opinions in this video are mine. I don't know the play calls. I don't know the plays. I'm simply taking a look at the film and then making a decision based upon what the All-22 suggest probably happened in order to give you better information to explain whether or not the offense we saw on Saturday was a one-shot deal, something sustainable for the future, or anything else that we may determine from what the film says. As always, the film never lies. It shows us what occurred, and then we can analyze that to kind of see what that may mean for future success. With all that being said, let's hop right in and start off at the beginning of the game. Opening drive for Florida's offense. And we're going to get, of course, for most of you that follow this channel, my favorite, the clap snap. Now, look, most teams do this. I don't love it. It seems to cause a lot of problems for a lot of teams on a frequent basis, yet coaches stick with it because sometimes that's just what coaches do. But what do we get right here? Clap, snap, and the right side goes. One more time. Motion from Trey, clap, snap, line goes. We're off and running, false start to start the game. Not the look Florida wants to give off, given what happened with Utah here at home. First and 15 is where Florida will start this game. Florida fans had heard a lot about Eugene Wilson, also known as Trey. We call him Trey here on the film review. Number three for Florida, a freshman. He was heavily featured at the start of this game before he went out with what was feared to be a broken collarbone, actually just a bruised collarbone, which is very difficult to do. So he escapes, I think, there without a worse fate. But early on, Tennessee going to load the box here with seven. Now, I think as you're going to see in this film review, Tennessee used a very peculiar strategy with defending Florida, especially given what teams like Utah had already put out there, what existed from even last season with how to defend Florida. Uh, Tennessee did not play solid defense in this game, especially tactically versus what Florida does do well and doesn't do well. Early on here, though, Florida predictably expecting Tennessee to load up in the box and stop the run. So they're going to try to run outside early on. And one way Billy likes to do that is with any kind of sweep. Jet sweep here, little jet sweep toss. And right from the start, we're going to make sure that we seal off the edge. Seal off the edge here with Odom. Let's seal this off here. Our running back, Montrell, becomes a lead blocker here. Wide receiver is going to block here. And right there, let's create the hole. This is what we're looking to see. Make one guy miss. Right there. Miss. Miss. Then Trey's off and running, so first and 15 becomes second and 10. Now, this would have been a good first down play to make it second and five due to the penalty. Of course, Florida's right back at second and 10. But again, Florida early on showing tactically they expect Tennessee to try to stop the inside run, so they're going to try to run outside, in this case using a jet sweep. We got first, we got five yards on the first play, rather. Let's see if we can get more by doing the same thing and basically just flipping the side. So different look here, slightly different look, but same concept. Jet sweep, get the defense flowing this way, eyes on the running back, and now Montrell's not going to become a blocker. We're going to use our version of Travis Kelsey here. Odom, wearing number 87, going to get out here and get a block. Trey Wilson going to wisely cut this back on. Uh, Tennessee does a nice job here. This is the correct thing to do. Seal off the outside, force him back to your help defenders. The key here is your linebacker has got to make this tackle if you're Tennessee. You have to make this tackle. You're going to see Florida make this tackle a lot in this game. If you close the space correctly, this becomes a two-yard gain. Sets up third and long. Instead, right here, we're slow to get here. We take a bad angle. Trey's a quick guy, and really right there, we hang on to him. However, damage already done. That becomes a first down. So two outside runs, gain of five, gain of 10, and Florida gets a first down in the early going. 
New set of downs, Tennessee, going to line up pre-snap very aggressively. We motion in Odom, as Florida did a lot here in this game. Heavy, heavy box here, looking like pre-snap. Cover one, right? Man-to-man, -man, cover one. It's exactly what Florida's going to get. Florida going to try to take advantage of this with some play action to hold these linebackers, keep them flatter, close to the line of scrimmage, creating more space for Florida's routes. We're going to run a deep clear-out route here followed by a two-level route here, uh, basically with, with uh, drags, essentially across the field at two different levels. So a levels concept here for Florida. Ricky's going to be the right one to throw to. He is going to be a couple of yards open at best, uh, but more open certain that Douglas winds up being here. Mertz, I think, probably would locate this, but as he reads Ricky right now, Ricky's not actually really looking super open. And then you can see the your down route, your check down route here is Douglas. He comes off that, and you can see that right there. So that's really good timing by Mertz. That's exactly the right sequencing. I mean, that's what you got to do, right? You can't stick on a window too long. That's bad quarterbacking. So he comes off it, and he also is going to get pressure right here in his face. Boom, right there. Let's this ball go. This is the right kind of miss. Look, at that's great coverage. You don't want to throw this behind him. Could be a pick. And then you're going to see on your screen right here, Ricky is the guy. A lot of green grass here to throw this football to. Uh, definitely should have been the throw. And again, when he looks at him, I think what you want to see here as a quarterback is how much grass you have here. And he had nothing but grass. So when you see that look early on in your progression, if you're Mertz, a veteran quarterback, you know you have grass. You've got your preferred receiver in that case with a lot of grass. Let's put the ball out here and live with it right? Put the ball down here and live with it and see what happens. Of course, you can also quickly ID this and then put the ball over here, which is what I think is probably the home run option right here. Let's watch Mertz. ID the Ricky route. Okay. I don't love it. I'm going to come here. However, if I don't love this right now, same throw, on, same throw angle either way. Now let's put the ball out over top this and let Ricky make a play on this running into it. There's certainly more space than there is here, but he sort of pre-commits to this check. Ricky, not there. I'm definitely throwing here. And as he looks there, he kind of sees, ah, this is not great, and slings us to the outside. So that's efficient management on first down. But again, Florida early in this game, as we've seen on film now for so many games in Billy's tenure, running play action, unable to really connect with anything downfield at all. It's something that continues to harm Florida's ability to move the football. Second down now, Florida sets up in the bunch set, which they like to use a lot. You're going to see it on this film, as you've seen already this season and last season out of Florida's playbook. The concept here is going to be one we've seen before. So we're going to have a basically a wheel route here, a hitch route here, and a hitch route here. Now, look, Billy loves hitches. I am not a fan of hitches, especially not nearly as much as Billy is for several reasons. One, it really hurts your yak, your yards after the catch. It's far less dangerous, and it's a lot easier for teams to bracket them, sit on them, uh, just make it hard for you, I think, to move down the field. But in this case, this is when it works. It's a safe throw. I think Billy's a very safe passing coordinator. He likes safe throws. Don't turn the ball over. Uh, that's definitely, obviously, a good rule of football. And this throw, it's going to work out. Well, Tennessee on defense, I thought, was very disorganized. You're going to see it as we walk through each of these passing plays. Uh, although they are expecting a pass here, so they have the right play call on. They're playing zone. They're perfectly fine. They're not going to wind up being fine because we have some issues here trying to wall off Ricky, uh, which we're not going to do. The, their relationship to each other is far too close. And then by the time he closes the gap to sit in his zone over here, it's much too late. And that is going to allow for a very easy completion by Mertz. Again, he's IDing right now. Okay, they're in zone. I've got cover three. I've got cover three underneath here. Let's work to Ricky. Okay, Ricky's not my fave. Let's come inside right here, right? Tons of space. And the reason Mertz knows this is off your screen. He sees this defender right here your key read defender. If he is over here, he slid down more in here, then he's going to look at Ricky and he's going to look at the posture of this defender who also, by the way, does not cover Ricky well because look at his posture. He wants to protect from the inside, but he's actually falling off this route. On second and 10, Ricky's going to sit right here for a very easy completion. So Tennessee's not covering this route or this route. Either one is here, but right now Mertz is doing the right thing, knowing that he's got two defenders where Ricky's going to be hitching. He's going to come into this space here. Always look to where your grass is, right to your grass. Look at all this nice grass here. Right on time, bam, strike. Also a perfect ball, perfect ball. Notice how he's throwing this to the outside shoulder, allowing Trey to turn and exit this, right? Really, really good ball. If he puts this ball to the inside, he can get tackled. This can be an incompletion. It can be a pass breakup. Instead, outside shoulder, turn the corner, turn that into a first down. Excellent play there by Mertz. Good conversion by Florida on second down and 10. So a short, simple, safe pass moves the sticks. Second and eight now for Florida. 
Florida pre-snap here, right? Looks like split safety. You can't be exactly sure at all as a quarterback what's going to happen here because you could morph into anything, right? He can drop back here into cover three. He can drop back here. He can sit as your, as your safety here, play cover three. We can play cover two. We can play cover four. So pre-snap, we don't have any idea what it's going to be. So we're going to, have to read this out post-snap. Now, right now, if we see this, and Mertz may not see this, right? This is well-timed. If we see this, our options now have narrowed. Right, cover four is most likely off the table. Now it's most likely, with him coming down into the box, going to wind up being cover three. Right, probably a zone blitz with cover three, which is exactly what it winds up being. But again, Mertz may not have seen this at all. So for Mertz right now, he has no idea what he sees in the back end. Goes to play action. Florida wants to block this up better than we do. Right, we're going to lose control here. Want to block this up better than we do as they come through. Kingsley back in has a nice game. You'll see him on film. And right here, Mertz has to escape, which is, yeah, just a little bit tight. And now we got to throw on the run, right? Diving defender, throwing on the run. Really good ball. Really good ball right here to Trey, who don't make a juke here, Trey. Let's just go ahead and take this first down, right? He's a freshman. He'll get this. Stick it, and we're going this way. We're taking the first down. Let's not get too greedy here. He winds up not getting the first down, but the route combination that occurred for this is in fact a very good one, especially versus cover three. It's the right route combination. We're going to smash concept here. Smash concept here. Hitch right here. Why is this a good concept versus cover three? This corner is going to bail. He's responsible for anything in this deep third over here. This safety is going to bail out here. And now what you're essentially doing is you're keeping this defender, who's got to get to the sideline, occupied with Ricky, at least on the release of his route, until he turns him loose to the safety, uh, which is going to be at this area of the field. So again, this is really good because he has to stay with Ricky till about here. He passes him off and then he's going to go over here. Well, at that point in time, he cannot get there in time. So this is the proper route versus this type of defense. This is an easy throw. It gets complicated by Florida losing control in the backfield here. Mertz then has to make a much harder throw, but he delivers the ball on time and a strike here on second and eight. If there's a better pocket here, however... And this is the difference of the details. If Florida is able to protect here, then this throw becomes a bigger completion because although you cannot see this very well, uh, he is much more open. If Mertz is able to make this fake, drop back and throw it from right here, he's probably going to be able to catch this ball and run head up versus the cover three defenders, the two that are remaining, right? But instead that does not happen because he has to roll out throw on the run, throw a little late. Either way, a nice completion. Could have been more, could have been more, but a good route combination versus cover three. Third and 11 for Florida. Florida's going to run a concept. Seam goes right here. And then, of course, if you guessed hitches, that's exactly correct. Florida's going to hitch. All right, there's your route. Classic play uh, for a lot of reasons in football. Third and 11, long way to go for Florida. This is a promising box to start off with. Light box, we can probably block this. Probably going to be okay. Hopefully I have time to stick one of these hitches. Uh, or, of course, if Tennessee gives us a deep ball, then, then we'll take that. Let's see how this plays out. Post-snap, simulated pressure. Going to drop back here. Going to rush just four. So a normal four-man rush is going to get home pretty quickly. Immediately, lose, lose contained right here. Alabama transfer, losing contained immediately. Now we're in trouble, right? We get a late pancake here. But this is a problem. Now Merce has to leave the spot. The good news here, though, is the only route that Mertz actually had, because everybody was covered, was going to be a check down to Montreal. Now, perhaps Montreal turns this into a first down. There was some space, but none of the four receivers running a pattern were actually open. When he rolls out here, the defender right here that was actually perfectly covering this hitch, when he sees Mertz in trouble, actually opens up his eyes and moves a little bit over here and then leaves this space for Mertz to throw an absolute dime on the run. Again, full sprint to the right. A lot of velo, got to throw this ball hard, puts it to the outside, and Trey, again, popping up all over this film. Excellent catch, converts for the first down. That's all Mertz. That entire play right there is all Mertz. No receivers are open. This check down would have been here. We lose right here with George. Our right tackle is going to get beat early on. That's not a good look. We're in trouble. Third and 11. Phenomenal throw. Excellent conversion. On the Mertz breakdown here on this channel, we talked about Mertz being a very capable pilot. He makes a lot of throws really well. Uh, one of the things he really excels at is throwing to the right, running to the right and throwing, which you've talked about on that very film review with Mertz, is something he does do well. He was unbelievably efficient at it in this game, and there's an early conversion on third and 11. New set of downs after that dart by Graham Mertz. You can see already Wilson. Pretty great stuff. Tonight, it says, 
Well, tonight has barely started. And Trey, off to a phenomenal start. Good to see a freshman getting heavily involved. Tennessee, again, very interesting. If you watch the Utah film, you know what you don't see are a lot of two-eye safeties, especially on first down, right? This is a difference, significant difference. On top of this, watch how Tennessee chooses to handle this. We're going to bring a nickel blitz. This is a run blitz, a nickel blitz, right? So we're going to try to protect against the run in case it happens, but Tennessee expecting pass. Already backing up. Safety off the box here. Already backing up. Now we're going to bring one line break, linebacker in. Now we've seen in past film reviews that Florida, of course, especially last year, would often be very late with their linebackers to come in and fit a gap, right? Their run fits were rather terrible. Tennessee's run fits were bad almost all night long. One big reason was their linebackers were often putting themselves in no man's land. Uh, for Again, I want to say that's interesting. Billy calls a good game here to take advantage of it, especially in the first half, but also interesting, just interesting tactics from Tennessee given what we have seen Florida put on film, and this contributed to Florida running the ball well, especially in the first half. So early on here, Florida accounts for this knowing we're going to run a zone run right here. We want to go left. The unblocked man can come here and not get us. We're going to account for the nickel or the linebacker coming in. That's exactly what we get. We get the look we want right here, which creates a really nice hole. Good job by the O-line. Notice how we cannot see any of Tennessee's players here crossing the feet of the O-line. It's exactly what you want to see. We've got a nice wall there set up. Big hole, good seal here. We're in business. Now if we can just get a block out here and then hold our block here, we're shooting through the gap. We almost do that either way on first down. It's a good gain, right? Could be a huge play if we can hold on here with Trey. We can get a little bit of better block here out of Trey. We get shoved back, but if Trey hits the weight room a little more, spends one more year in the program, right, he might push him back out of the way here, and now we're off to the races, right? Either way, as a freshman, that's a tough call. Not quite ready for that moment yet. We wind up taking a nice gain on first down. But again, Tennessee backing off on first down. Take what the defense gives you. That is the rule of football. If Tennessee wants to back off, run the football. We talked about this with McNeese last week. McNeese was content to play three and four deep the whole game in a competitive game where you really respected McNeese's ability to beat Florida. You would have run it every single time. You always want to stay with the numbers. And if Tennessee presents the numbers to Florida, Florida should take advantage, which they did on this play right here. Third and five pre-snap looks like a six-man box. Good time to run, especially given what Florida is featuring here. Bring a motion man across on the jet sweep, and now we see what Tennessee's actually going to run. What's happening here is we're going to have action with the safety coming out here to Trey. Going to wall off the edge here uh, with the other safety. So both safeties rotating in. Then we're going to pull up here and rotate to cover one man, aggressively trying to stop the run. The only problem for Tennessee is they're selling out this way. Good run play design by Billy. We've talked about Billy being an excellent run play designer. It is what he is best at by far. Good misdirection here. He sets up Tennessee for this. And now we win at the point of attack early on. Small loss here, but we win everywhere else, creating this gap. We do not win here, but that's okay because Tennessee, right, too far outside. Talked a lot about Florida's own defense last season, losing the ability to control the edge by either over-pursuing right? Or just simply not controlling the edge. And here, although you win at the point of attack, you actually put yourself out of the play by over pursuing outside. That allows a hole now. He cannot get here. Now our one guy who can make the play is late with his read, right? They're too close together. They don't both want to be in the same gap, but they're basically covering the same gap here. Now he's got to get around this block coming here, which he cannot do. And now we shepherd him aside. He's the only player that can make the play, but except he's too far to the outside. That allows Trevor Etienne, who has an absolutely sensational burst with very quick feet to get right downhill and through that gap. And now we're off to the races and a Sue string tackle there saves perhaps an even bigger gain. But all of this starts with a favorable run look on third down and five. There are times in this film review when we say, hey, I hate that look. In this case, nice job by Billy anticipating that Tennessee was going to expect run, giving them some window dressing. Trey had seen the ball a lot. He had seen the ball a ton so far in this game. So it was credible that he's going to get it here. 
Again, this play will not work if this is not credible for him to get this ball. And if he had not been doing damage, Tennessee would not care. Instead, they overload on this. They take the window dressing. That allows exactly what we need. And some undisciplined play right here by their edge defender and a misread by their linebacker allows for this to become a big first down for Florida. Florida approaching the red zone. Chalk this up to times you do not want to run the football. Eight guys in the box, right? This is the perfect time to pass the football. Now, you don't know if they're going to sell out for a run here or not, but regardless, if you have eight guys within five yards of the line of scrimmage, it's time to pass, especially on second and seven. And in fact, they're going to bring a ninth guy in and then bubble this guy. So they have nine guys in the box. Now he's going to get out of the box. So you essentially wind up with eight. And Florida says, forget it. We're running this thing anyway, right? We're going to run a fake little jet here to Ricky that's not on time. In fact, we ignore this fake entirely. Not good window dressing. Handoff on the inside zone. That play is dead, right? Dead. It's a bad play call. As a play caller, you're not going to get them all right. But on this particular play, a bad pre-snap look. And then that leads to uh, a loss on the play. So sometimes on the player, sometimes it's on the play call. This is a play call play here on second and seven. Florida now with a third and long. Third and 12, Florida goes empty. I love empty sets on third down and long, especially if you feel like you can block even with quick game, even with quick game, even with a one and a half or one step drop. If you have a good quick game, team is playing zone, there are windows to hit that you can convert for a first down. Unfortunately, Florida is going to put something on film that we see quite a bit in the passing game, which is two receivers that have a very, I'm just going to call it an odd relationship to each other. Uh, and that's going to be what you see at the top of your screen here where this play goes. And that is this, right away, you can see a lot of grass here. This is very promising, right? If you're Mertz, you see a lot of grass. In fact, there are a lot of ways this becomes a first down or something close to it. Florida is going to elect to run Ricky on a very long, if you guessed hitch, you are correct, hitch, while putting another hitch literally directly in front of him in the same throw line. Watch right here. There you go. Stop. Freeze the tape. Look at that. You tell me what that is. I can't tell you because I don't know. Someone could be running a wrong route there. There could be an issue. But again, on film, especially in the All-22, on routes that go off the screen, this frequently happens. It's hard to imagine why because this is actually a really easy first down completion to Ricky. In fact, that ball is there. Uh, it's harder to make it there, of course, if you have two guys in the same space. And also, you're pulling this defender into that throw window. So for a simple example, when you get this look, which was ideal for Florida, right? You can instead do something like this bring him flatter, and then set this up here. Now, you're one-on-one -on -one with this safety, but if you can get that safety to backpedal enough, that window's open. If Mertz has time, he has this throw, right? Now, in this case, Mertz looks at it, and he does, again, have this throw. Here's the problem. He doesn't have this throw right now. Why? Because Ricky's not going to turn around until he gets to here. Another reason why I don't like hitches Lastly, on this route, which you can instead do on this, see how much space we have here, we get zone, is you can obviously give the option, right? You can give the option for this ball to be thrown quickly. So if you see a bailing safety of a zone, your receiver knows, look at all this space. I'm going to flick my head around and expect this ball here quickly before the hitch occurs. Right now in the quick game, we throw this ball here. We're probably converting. Florida does not have that in the playbook. It is not something they do. He has to wait for this hitch to turn all the way around. That is why, despite the fact that we have all this grass, he's not going to necessarily have time to make that throw. Look now, he's not even close to turning around yet. We've got a free rusher coming in his face. He elects to throw the ball on time to his check down, and that play is now dead, right? So there is space. There was space. In fact, Tennessee's defense was rather porous with regards to how much space they offered Florida on the football field. Um, so Florida gets a stop on third and 12, and you're thinking, okay, this seems similar. We had the ball for a long time, sort of slowly drove down the field. And then, of course, we're going to get a field goal blocked, really tipped, really a low kick. Uh, but we wind up with zero points with a long, methodical drive. And if you're a Florida fan, you're thinking, oh, no, what does this game look like? Tennessee then scores very quickly. We're down 7 nothing, And perhaps you're in the stadium wondering, what is this game going to look like for the entirety of it? The good news is Florida does get it rolling from here. And this drive would be really the only drive. Uh, for quite some time that they get stalled on and don't either wind up with some points or an opportunity to get points. This feels like a huge drive for Florida. Although Mertz is six for seven, nothing has really gone down the field. Florida comes away with no points and they're already down seven, nothing after a quick strike by Tennessee. Given the optics of that Utah game, 
Perhaps you're feeling like Florida might not be able to score. We could be in trouble if Tennessee scores enough and we don't score at all. So what do we come out with here? We're going to fake this little jet sweep. Roll out to the right. Again, a staple of Billy's plays. Get a levels concept here. Get chased and then throw the ball away. All right? Nobody is open. I'm going to stop it right here. There are three levels, one, two, and one above you. All of these defenders, this one you can't see, have the advantage to the sideline on Florida's players. Now, Khalil just passes them here at the end, but they essentially are all running the routes for Florida ahead of them. We saw this all last year frequently, time and time again, that when we ran these rollout plays to the right, these receivers had nowhere to go and teams were actually ahead of them. Defensively, essentially waiting for this play. Tennessee calls a good play on defense here. Nowhere to go for Mertz. So Mertz throws the ball away. So far, solid game management by Mertz. And of course, he would wind up managing this game very, very well. A large reason why Florida won. The quarterback's job is to take what the defense gives you and also to run the plays your coaches give you to the best of your ability. If nothing is there, don't force it. So this is a quality throwaway on first down. Third and five, a big third and five. Florida zone territory. This feels like you do not want to give Tennessee the ball back. Now we're going to see pre-snap more of what we would have seen previously in the Utah game, except again, curiously, Tennessee electing to play zone on this side. We're going to play man over here, but we're going to also see how Tennessee chooses to play this, which is to bail. So he is in man. However, he opens up essentially in a cover three technique, a cover three technique where he's going to give up something short to cover something deep. It's third and five. It's not third and 15. Mertz immediately opens up. IDs of the linebacker is stuck in here, which means he knows he has this window. If you watch the Mertz prep video or you listen to the pod, you know that Mertz, one of his favorite routes, if not his absolute favorite route, is the slant route. You also know that important games while at Wisconsin, he often sailed the slant route the higher the pressure was. Not pressure on him, just the pressure of the game. So this is a big moment for Mertz because this slant route is significant and he throws an absolutely perfect ball right on time. Perfect ball, right to the face mask, square up. Douglas, sure-handed, converts, right? Really significant conversion for Florida, not only for the team's confidence, but also letting Tennessee know that, hey, look, we can run a quick, this is a quick game right here, zero step, boom, slant, ball out. Tennessee's pass rush, one of the best parts of their team, we can negate your pass rush with some quick game here on third and five. Ball out on the face mask. Also good news, if you're in the booth and you're looking at this play, the hitches that we love so much are open, right? Both of these guys are open for first downs. That is nice. Open and also open there. So both of your concepts worked on this play. Your slant route versus the cover three pseudo man technique. And then the zone here on the boundary side also gives you two receivers that are open, which means as a quarterback, you're starting to feel pretty comfortable. You're like, hey, look, stuff is there, right? Stuff is there. Plays can be made. Let's keep on moving the sticks. First and 10. Now, Billy has a great feel for when to mix in a power run. Again, Florida, a zone blocking team, but we do run gap stuff. And when we do, we often has a really good feel for it, especially if Florida, again, is getting a favorable box. Take advantage of this box, a six-man box. I guess Tennessee thought that Florida was a prolific passing team. I don't know. I can't really tell you. I think in a lot of ways, Tennessee really overthought their game plan for stopping Florida. But Florida's going to take advantage right here. right? Once again, Tennessee going to bring pressure off this side. Florida's not going there. Florida going to run a counter, a creative counter at that, a center. Check this out. A center, right? Center tackle counter. We're going to pull Damian George across. We're going to have Kingsley comes from the center spot. Here we go kick out. You've seen, if you've seen any of my videos before, obviously you know that the the GT counter, a fixture of Lincoln Riley, something LSU ran all over Florida with a couple years ago, I heavily profiled it on that video. And then something Billy uses here as well. Uh, it's a great run at any level. And it's really great when you get this stuff. These guys are all out of the play. They're no longer here. Now he can make a play. He can't make a play. And we've got a big, right? A big right tackle coming through. That's what you want. Let's get through here. Let's make a hit. Let's lay the wood to this guy because then I'm off and running. Boom. Perfect. That's all I need from you. I've got ETN. I've got great feet. Trevor's going to get out of here. 
And now it's up to Trevor. First and 10 definitely is going to be a first down. We get a crazy bad angle from a safety. It's college football. You get this stuff. It's one reason why you like gap runs when you can get them is you get your guys to the second level one-on-one versus a safety. ETN kind of with a weird angle here. Doesn't really get to make a move. He just turns. But that's good enough for this Tennessee safety to come downhill and flop one arm. Whoop, little dead fish action right there. Here you go, and slap you the dead fish. Boom, oh, you're not down. That's too bad. And then even more curiously, number five here comes in, and he just decides he's going to give a little shove. Hey, man, what's up? What's the roller derby, maybe? I don't know. They probably hit harder than this in roller derby, I think, actually. But a little touch, perhaps? Like, oh, wait, yeah, go down. Oh, you, you didn't go down? Oh, oh, no, no, not good, not good. Then it's a race, and ETN, again, with that quick burst, separates, and he's like, hey, man, I don't have that kind of burst. You're getting ahead of me. I'm not looking good. I don't want to be on film review in Knoxville on Monday with the coaches. I'm just going to dive right down to the ground, act like something hurt. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's that's a bad look. Touchdown hands go up. We know it. ETN knows it right. Big game-changing play. Huge momentum shift for Florida. If Billy's offense ever starts running against the opposition, things will start clicking. It's much harder to play defense versus this Florida team, even though their passing offense, again, I think continues to be subpar. If they can run the football because they're good enough to score at least enough points to keep this game close and competitive. And with ETN going off like he did today and pulling moves again that aren't really even moves, just kind of, I mean, okay, I'm going to go this way. Whiff. I'm not going to try and tackle there. I'm glad I'm not doing a Tennessee defensive breakdown, by the way. Swim move. Eat the dirt, I'm gone. Touchdown, right? Big time. Yeah, absolutely. Big moment for ETN. Had a monster game. Was a huge reason why Florida won this football game. Florida is going to tie this game up. Oh, wait, I'm just kidding. Florida's going to get the extra point blocked, and we're going to be down 7-6. Florida catches Tennessee in man-to-man here at the perfect time and then runs a concept that works really well, which is the old split zone. Again, why does this play work, right? This play works because Florida runs split zone very well. And here's Odom, also known as Florida's version of Travis Kelsey because he wears number 87, and it's fun to say that even though they are very different players. Regardless, Odom, very dependable. Going to come around the corner here like he's running split zone. This edge defender thinks this could be a run out my side even though all the zone blockers are this way. The reason split zone is such a good play is you can also run it this way. He has to stay home and cover the edge. That's his job. Except he also forgets that his job is if the running back does not get the football to cover the tight end who's going out for a pass, which he doesn't really ever realize. He gets shoved this way. He's actually still checking over here. He's like, does he have the ball? I can't really tell. We better get gashed again for a touchdown. I don't really know. I'm not really sure. Uh, he's still actually looking. Meanwhile, Kelsey's got the ball over here. He's turning the corner. Oh, there he is. He finally locates it. Off the sideline, there we go, lumbering, bumbling, stumbling down the sideline, Odom with a first down, right? Good work by Odom. Again, always dependable, number 87 in there, doing what he can for Florida. That play works because of Florida's ability to run the football and their ability to run split zone, putting pressure on the read defender or the edge defender for Tennessee. Florida, a very welcome three for four on third downs in the first quarter, and they're faced with another third down. Again, third down and manageable for Florida is a lot better than third and 10 or 11. However, can Florida convert? We're going to go empty again. Again, everyone here knows my affinity for empty sets for a lot of reasons. We're going to go empty, and we are once again not going to have anyone open. Now, I'm going to show you on the other view we get of why that is, but again, if you guess that we basically ran all hitches, and that Tennessee expected us to basically run all hitches, you are correct. You can already see that with all of the defenders standing on the first down line, and Mertz is like, well, I do not have that. On top of that, uh, Tennessee's just bringing a three-man rush. Three-man rush right here. All right, the protection is mm, great. That's great. This is great. We're going to lose a little bit of contain here, but not really. All right, this is an important thing when watching the offensive line. Their job is to create this pocket. If the quarterback chooses to escape out here, there is no right tackle in the world that can stop that from happening unless they happen to pancake right the defender like we see here. Uh, you can't defend this. This is not George's fault. Mertz is now voluntarily running himself into trouble. He should instead climb the pocket, right? Third down and five if you're Mertz. You want to climb the pocket. Do not do what you do here. Take your eyes off of downfield. 
stare at the defender. Now we're looking back again. So nice job by Mertz putting his eyes back downfield. But right here, if you're a quarterback, you play quarterback, you're in high school, you're somewhere else, whatever level you're at, don't do that. Keep your eyes downfield. Climb the pocket. Look at what you see here. Climb this pocket. Put stress on the defense here. Then this throw will come open. All right, we don't do that. So whatever. We're out of that. That's gone. Now we're rolling out. We're being chased. We're looking around. Looking around. And instead, what we do have is what looks to be a route here and a route that you can't see off your screen over here. Here's our one defender. Mertz comes in. Sick little pump fake. Whoop. Nice little pump fake. He goes airborne. Eats that thing like a nice piece of cake right there. He's airborne. And then Mertz lets him know, yeah, you tasted that, didn't you? What flavor was that piece of pie? And then takes that thing for a first down. Puts the ball out for extra measure. Why not? Take the extra yard or two. Bingo. All right, really, really nice stuff there from Mertz. Again, should have climbed the pocket. Didn't climb the pocket. And instead gets this nice highlight. Sometimes you get rewarded for not doing the fundamental thing. Let's look at what happens here in the empty set. Right away, he wants to go here. This is the quick game look he wants. That is not happening. Right, we got that walled off. Also, hitch here. That's not happening. We have a defender here. That is also not happening. Take a look again. Florida likes to do this. We have a hook defender. I mean, a, sorry, a hitch route here, another hitch route right here, and look at the relationship with them. You're playing quarterback. Take a look at this. Those routes are so close to each other that this defender, by alignment, is actually covering both of them. Right? Your spacing needs to be better here. If you move him here, and then you put him here, this is here. Also, if you run him on a dig route instead and leave him on a hitch route, you have nothing but space. Mertz can then climb the proverbial pocket like we talked about, and from right here, stick a ball to a wide open guy in a dig who potentially scores a touchdown if he beats the safety. Florida does not put those kind of routes on film. Don't Can't tell you why, right? So Mertz works with what he works with, leaves the pocket. Now we're rolling out. Now what do I have? I have nothing. Got three defenders here bracketed. I could take a really risky throw over the top of this throw. Let's not do that. I can float one out here, which again is possible, right? That's probably a ball he can make. I've got a defender in my face. So I got to put this ball to the sideline on the run. He's close. One thing when you're on, you know, on TV, it's like, okay, great. This guy looks so open. Full dead sprint run being chased. Stuff starts moving very fast. Montreal is open. Let's pump this and then whoop. Right, dancing with the stars right here. Nice move. Boop, yep, good dance move. He recovers for Mertz only to say, I see you. Hey, I see you, dude. That was nice. That was nice. Thanks for getting airborne. Boom, first down. Nice work. Florida converts a crucial third down. All right, first and 10, Tennessee. Seven guys in the box. If you got seven in the box, little motion across. Now you're going to get your safety coming down following Khalil Jackson. Now you got man, cover one man, first down and 10. You've been running the ball pretty well. Get the linebackers to pull up some. Good time for some play action. Look at this. We got a lot of options in the backfield. Let's run some play action. There it is. There's your play action. Stay in and protect. Send him out as your check down and send our two receivers out off of your television screen. Mertz is looking. Please, somebody be open. Somebody be open. Boom. Sack. All right, what happens? Well, you don't know. You can't see. Let's take a look and see what happens. All right, as we've seen before, and I keep saying as we've seen before, not to try to sound depressing, but just to point out the realities. When things are awesome, as all of you know, I point those out in the highest possible sense as well. Uh, perhaps it's like a barbell. It's like if things are awesome, you're stoked, and you're like, check this out, it's awesome, we see it. If things aren't awesome, you're like, hey, check this out, it's the other end of the barbell. It's not awesome. You know, it is what it is. Either way, play action fake, linebackers pull in. We got lots of space. And we have everything we want, right? This defender is a dead defender. He's too far underneath. He's guarding nobody. And we essentially have 2v3. This is what you want when you are running play action. 2v3 is a dream because you have the entire football field. It's one major reason why you want to run the football the way that you do is you're playing 2v3 in max protect with a check down over here with the entire football field to go. The only problem is take a look at our routes once again. You play quarterback. Look at these routes. Look at them. Do you see them? They're essentially walling themselves in between the triangle here, right? Now, if you're a defender Tennessee, your goal is to keep the routes interiorly in between the safety and you so you can funnel these routes. So when Florida funnels them for you, it's pretty easy. And let's pause it right here. These dudes are within one yard of each other. What is this accomplishing if you know you are most likely running this versus a man-to-man -man defense? I have no idea. It also, once again, takes forever. 
as we've talked about, this is taking forever. We do get pressure, but we would have to max protect this extremely well for quite some time to even remotely get this ball off. If we're trying to hit this ball to Ricky here, we've got to protect for like a good three and a quarter seconds, which is unbelievably unrealistic. Serious, serious problem. Now, if you're saying, which I know a lot of you are saying, hey, James, this check down is wide open. I know it because no one else is here. Well, you would be correct. This defender is essentially stuck covering both of them, right? And then he sees Mertz looking this way, and he jumps in here. So if Mertz could have looked this way and then right now decided to snap his head over here and deliver this check down, we have big yardage. That's exactly what Mertz should have done, by the way. That's what Mertz should have done. Now, why is he not doing this? I showed you earlier how good he is at getting rid of the ball on time. Well, I can't know for sure what the timing of this route is. I want to say this every single time on these film reviews because I get comments each and every week. I do not know what the play design is. I do not know the exact depth of the routes. I do not know the drop depth of the quarterback. I do not know when Billy wants this ball to be thrown. I don't know those things. What I know on film is that I see a quarterback who is waiting for his window to come open. When previously he would see that this is not going to be open, nothing here is going to be open, he would go to the next guy. He's not doing it, which I presume means he's not gotten to the point yet where he's supposed to go to the check down. That's all presumption. I don't know. Either way, it is yet another play action play that goes for a negative set of yardage for Florida, despite the fact that Florida is running the football well. This is not sustainable if you want to be a championship team. Florida is not going to be a championship team this year. There's no chance of that. We don't have the resources for that yet. However, at some point, Florida is going to have to convert play action passes if they want to get better on offense. You cannot continue to waste opportunities like this. And one thing like we talk about is play design when it comes to to your routes. Now, as a quick notice here, what goes wrong on the offensive line? Let's take a look. We're zone blocking here. We got a fan out, right? Which we're doing. You see this fan right here. Kingsley opens up, double here on the, on the nose, slide and fan, right? Make sure we're fanning, we're covering. Okay, get your head around fan. All right, excellent. Now I've got two guys to block, right? Who am I blocking? I've got two guys to block who am I blocking? Can't block both of them. Well, what happens here is we're locked up and then we're coming through two on one. Okay. Now, this is what most teams do versus zone blocking schemes is they will overload. They will flood one right after the other. And as long as they pull this concept off, it's very, very hard for the offensive line to account for this. You can only do so much, especially when you've left your running back on essentially a role where he's running a little route here, right? We're running a route. It's a check down route and not staying in to block this out. So the check down route does pull this defender. It also loses protection here. And now the play is broken down. So that is the anatomy of why that play did not work. Uh, and now we're on to the next one. Third and 12. Look at this timely stat here by ESPN on third down. He's three for three on third down. That is unbelievable. Great job, Graham Mertz. You are steering the ship correctly here for Florida. And what we have here is going to be a concept that would have worked had we had time right here. We don't have time. But you actually have two verticals here and then... Again, if you put on your bingo card two hitches, you would be correct. Disregard how ugly that hitch looks. The marker sometimes doesn't cooperate. Either way, two hitches. So there you go. Two hitches, two vertical routes on the left side. Bingo opening up here. We're going to get pressure early on. Now, look, George is not quick enough, in my opinion, to really be an effective right tackle. I shouldn't say effective. I should say, you know, like top decile. Uh, he, he's getting the job done, obviously. He's doing fine. I think he'd probably be a much better guard but Florida does not have the opportunity for that right now. However, he does do a nice job when he's getting speed rushed and people are beating him of making sure he sort of, quote, reroutes them just like this. That's good. That's what you should do as an O-lineman. If he's a touch quicker with his footwork, he's actually bottling this up more. However, he is in control of this. This does allow Mertz to step up. And as long as the rest of our linemen are doing their jobs, like you see here, we have an exit window. We can keep our eyes downfield, which Mertz does, and we can still... Make a play. All right, so that's good work by Mertz. Climb the pocket, eyes downfield, and then make what I think is Mertz's probably best throw of his life. He might say something different, but he's throwing again on the run to the right. He is going to flick this ball over a defender who is sitting in an optimal spot to cover this. Right? There is the tiniest of windows. Here is Khalil Jackson. The tiniest of windows for this ball to get through there. 
And you can see kind of fuzzily that this ball is basically right over his outstretched hand. I mean, it's barely over there. And then right into the perfect spot for Khalil to make a absolutely cold catch on the sideline on third and 12 for a significant conversion. This angle here is going to give us a, an excellent example of just how good this throw is from Mertz. Roll out to the right. And look at this ball right here. Right? Now you kind of lose the ball. You can Maybe you can kind of see it. I don't know. Actually, you really can't see it much at all. However, I promise you it is there. And it is barely right now, barely above his fingertips. Just imagine there's a football there. Barely above his fingertips because that's where it is. He almost touches this ball only for it to then go right into the hands of Khalil. I mean, this is just, this is awesome. What a, what a look this is. I mean, look at where he put that ball. In the absolute perfect spot for a conversion, putting Mertz, here we go, this is the angle I needed. See, I should have previewed this before. That's poor by me. Look at that. I mean, his finger is, there's like probably a piece of paper in between his finger and the football. And this thing is right, I mean, come on. Are you kidding me? What an absolute dime. Just a filthy, cold dime by Mertz. I mean, this guy's probably still thinking about this. He's like, how did I not? I mean, look at my fingers, dude. They're right there. How did I not touch this pass? But he doesn't. Disgusting. Outrageous. Excellent conversion for Florida. Despite the fact that Florida did not really complete a pass that traveled more than 12 or 13 yards the entire game, they were very effective. One reason was that Tennessee messed up a lot of simple things on defense. And look, as a college football program, your goal is to do things with pre-snap motion, formations, tempo, to try to give yourself easy yards. Now, Florida got a lot of that. Here's an example. Ricky, starting left side of the formation, right here. Let's watch Tennessee's defender open up, attempt to sell the safety. That's got to be you. Come down and get that. Right, He kind of creeps over and thinks, yep, that is me. I'm going to get that. Except he's way late to get there. On top of that, our inside defender here, linebacker play is really key, does not widen out enough. Right, He is not widening out enough. Space is everything. And because of that, as he stops his feet, watch him, focus on him, stop the feet, now he's in trouble. Because of that, his angle is not going to be good enough. And now he cannot make this tackle. Here's the safety that's super slow and late getting in on this play. And that becomes a easy nine-yard pickup without even being touched. That's good. Florida needs more of that. A nice play call there. But again, really a messed up exchange by Tennessee. Florida taking advantage of it. Florida was the initiator of that mistake because of a pre-snap motion, something they run frequently, something Tennessee, again, I'm going to say oddly, it wasn't like we saw a lot of new wrinkles from Florida's playbook in this game. It's, it's what Florida does. Uh, but it was working, and I think we're all thankful for that. Right now, Florida's down 7-6, but so Florida's driving. Florida going to hit Tennessee with another gap run here, a counter, this time a guard tight end counter right here. There it is. Following through is your lead blocker. Tennessee, although they start with seven in the box, is really not going to have seven in the box. Watch the post-snap action. We're backing up. They're expecting pass. Good play call by Billy. Right, If you're calling a good game, you want to have the defense confused. You want to be hitting them with runs when they expect pass and vice versa. It's going to make your plays better. Florida, again, with another power run here. His job is to kick out. His job right here, as you're going to see, is to get in and then take his seal. Now, when it's this open, you really have a choice as to which way you push the defender. If you have this kind of space, we wall this off, we wall that off. Ideally, you get out here fast enough that you push him one way or the other, and the running back works with that. In the ideal world, you seal him off towards the middle of the field so we can get out here to our next blocker. But you take what you get, and in this case, the Tennessee defender does the right thing here, turns to the outside to try to push to his help which is correct. But then again, ETN so quick on his feet, so quick to burst when you give him space, shoots through that hole, makes one miss, and then gets a first down from a first down. Nice execution on another gap run by Florida. Florida was sensational in the red zone in this football game, a large reason why they won, right? They were scoring touchdowns and not field goals on third and six. We've got Hayden Hansen, a freshman tight end, then we have Travis Kelsey here in the version of Jonathan Odom. 12 personnel Florida has not been super successful in the Billy era under 12 personnel, in large part because Florida's tight ends are not what you would necessarily consider to be dominant tight ends in the SEC yet. 
Fall going to come out here on a crucial third and six and hope to convert with a mesh route. Now, look, I'm an air raid guy. I love air raid concepts in a passing playbook. Florida's mesh routes often are pretty sloppy. In fact, in general, although I don't want to call out an individual player, Ricky's routes tend to be quite sloppy on a game-by-game -game basis. So, Ricky, if you're watching this, which I know you probably are not because you're watching your own film with the team. Let's clean up these routes because you're sort of taking your depths to random places. Your cuts aren't super clean. And this is not a great mesh route, but you know who does run a great mesh route right here is Hayden Hansen, the freshman. And let me tell you why he runs a great mesh route. You want to get A close to your mesher. Ideally, you want to be able to give a low five to the guy you're meshing with. Secondarily, you really want to drive the feet back of the defender. Now, why do you want to do this? It's really, really important that the defenders don't recognize that you are going to run this crosser so that you have time to create space. Okay. If they're going to zone this up, they're going to pass this off. So basically he's going to see this. He's going to pass it to him. He's going to see this. He is going to pass it over to him. So if you get the depth right, which Hayden Hansen is doing right now on this play, he is going to push this defender back here long enough to allow Ricky to come open, and this is going to be a hitch right here at the first down. The classic mesh play, the staple. Everyone runs this at every level of football, and watch how well this works. We're going to drive him back, drive him back right now. This defender, notice how quickly he sees, I'm going to pass this off. This is not me. He is actually going to take Hansen out of the play, but Ricky's route is not what gets it open. It's Hansen's route who drives this linebacker all the way back, creating all of this space for Ricky. If Hansen runs the same level of route that Ricky does, it's highly unlikely this play works. So Ricky is going to get the first down conversion. He is going to be the guy who gets on the stat sheet. But Hansen really is the guy who makes this play go. And they're going to circle. That's ESPN, not me, circling the wrong guy. He does the right thing right here. That's This is perfect defense by him. Honestly, you can't do any better. He shepherds him to the inside, recognizes at the exact right point. That's a mesh play. And then look. Makes this throw very hard. Now, if you want to fit this in here, you can. That's a hard throw, right? That's a hard throw. This is a very easy throw. Look at all the space we have right here. That is a very easy throw, and that occurs because of this route right here. Pushed him vertically, pushed him back. He's too late to get through. Bingo. Not a good ball behind him, but we catch this, work with it, and get the first down, right? So not a perfect executed mesh route by Florida, but Hansen's route does the trick. Good depth, way to push the defender back and create that space. Sometimes it's not about the play, it's just all about the player. And in this case, this is Montreal's story to tell. And here is the story he will tell. Florida, a jet sweep, fake, kind of, not really, to Ricky. All we're trying to do here is hold a couple of guys here to give ourselves more favorable numbers where we actually want to run the football over here. We're not going to get that because Tennessee is all over this play. If you're a defensive coordinator, you really hate what you're about to see. But as I've been mentioning with Coach Ham and Florida's defense, Coach Armstrong, if you don't know, we call him Coach Ham here at the pod because um, he kind of looks like, well, I mean, loosely, but either way, looks like uh, the great Hambino or Ham from Sandlot. So that's just my take. You can disagree. Either way, point is, this is dead. However, it's not dead when two guys try to do the same exact job, right? He should be on the edge. He should plug this gap right here. But they're both selling out to get to the edge, and they both oversell out. They both oversell out. They both try to put the air flaps on. They're like airplanes landing, right? Check them out. Air flaps, air flaps landing. You know, got to reduce my speed. I can't stop fast enough, and now he's walking in the end zone. Right, great stuff there by Montreal. Great cut, taking something out of nothing and making it a touchdown and giving Florida the lead. Let's go for two. We've seen Florida's two-point play earlier this season. I was not a fan. Let's take a look at this one and see how we like it. We've seen Tom Brady run a similar concept, although it certainly wasn't like this, and I'll tell you why in a second. Uh, that doesn't work. All right, could this concept have worked? And the answer is, of course it could have. In fact, pre-snap right here, this concept is going to work. However, the spacing with how Florida runs it is all jacked up. And let me tell you why. When you bring this in motion, does he follow or not? That means, is he in man or is he in zone? Right? Let's see for yourself. 
Right away, that's how the defense plays. Now, when you draw the play up, it needs to work against man or zone. But regardless, if you want this play to work, what you want to have happen is you want to take advantage of all of this space over here. You want to catch this ball and you want to get in somewhere over there. So here is how this, in my opinion, could have worked and should have worked. These two defenders are too far inside to stop a ball thrown right here. So what you want to do is you want your block to come here and then here right? That's the goal. There and there. Now we can imagine, start display, motion, snap right now, ball gets thrown to this mark right here, ball thrown to this mark right here. Let's see where he catches it. Notice how my mark is back here. He's a good three, four yards in front of it. And we're not blocking the guy who's most easily going to be able to make the tackle. We're also allowing this guy to get in on the play, right? So the same play concept thrown outside the hash right about here, is going to get this guy out of the play and this guy out of the play. And now we are playing 3v2, and that is good football, right? 3v2 is good football. Leaving an unblocked man on the edge where he has a free run at Ricky is not good football, along with an interior defender who has a free run at Ricky is not good football. We ran him into the wrong spot. Now, it's possible this timing just got jacked up on this play and everything I said was supposed to happen. But again, concept can work. Execution's got to get better. If we get that right, Block it up like this. That play is probably going to be a walk-in two-point conversion. It's not what Florida does. Winds up being a 12-7 to lead. After a luscious interception by Florida's Devin Moore on Joe Milton, the guy who rarely throws picks. He does overthrow the ball quite a bit, but picks not so often. Florida in business here, now second and goal. Florida in 12 personnel again. Right, one running back, two tight ends. There is Hayden Hansen, and here is Travis Kelsey slash Jonathan Odom. And here is split zone. One more time, jet sweep. A lot of stuff going on in the backfield here, right? we got a jet sweep. We've got split zone. Got a lot of eye candy for all these defenders in the box, and there are a bunch of them. A lot of eye candy. It's going to wind up being a play action, and this is the problem. Your edge defender, once again, is like, ooh, there's some eye candy. Okay, i got split zone. I'm coming here. i got to engage this guy. Bam, hit him. Close this gap. Oh, no, quarterback still has the ball. Who then is accounting for Travis Kelsey? Nobody. Let's get in the end zone. Good hit there. Stretch. He's so close. Doesn't quite make it. Perhaps fumbles. Either way, gets it back. And Florida's in business now on third and goal from the basically one-inch line. Third and goal. Looks like a QB sneak here. Tennessee thinks it's a QB sneak. Florida's showing QB sneak. What will Florida do? They're going to QB sneak it. Key to this play is going to be Mazuka right here, the Baylor transfer at right guard. He's going to have the greatest possible timing of the snap. I've watched this a bunch of times uh, at every possible camera angle you can get, and he launches, if you can tell, look how quickly, right here, focus right here, he launches well before any other lineman and almost just as fast as the center, Kingsley, who's snapping the football. Not only does he launch, I mean, he is already, look at his look at his pad level. Super low, upending Tennessee. I mean, that's where they're running behind, right? They're running behind him, I think, in large part because these two must run this play really, really well together. And this is just perfect execution. Kingsley, you can see his, his helmet gets pushed up, which means Tennessee's pad level one. They want the point of attack. They're actually driving him backwards. Momentum is pushing him backwards. But instead, you can't even see any more Mazuka. And that's what you want because that means he has one with his pad level and he has a place now for Graham Mertz to just fall behind, which he does. And you can see how that works. Push behind him, lay in the end zone, touchdown. So really, really good stuff there from Mazuka. It's always great to give the offensive line love when you can because that play was entirely made by him and his timing on the snap. Florida gets in the end zone again, cashing in off that turnover, setting themselves up with a nice lead here. If you had Florida leading by two scores in the second quarter on your bingo card, congratulations, you were not most people in the country. Florida 19-7 lead with the ball back again in the second quarter, a chance to score again and put further distance between them and the Vols. Tennessee here with six men on the line of scrimmage. There is seven and eight right here. Got man, cover one. Looks like a chance to pass the ball on first and 10. Florida's not been hitting play action very well. Florida has been running the ball well on Tennessee in large part because Tennessee has not been coming downhill in their run fits. Their gap control has been weak, and they have been falling for all of the window dressing that Billy has given them. And here's a bunch more window dressing. 
we've got again an orbit motion this time which is going to work. I want you to show I want to show you how this orbit motion works right now. We hold the edge defender because he has to be responsible for Mertz in case he keeps it and or the exit player in Ricky. He is also out here now at the point of attack. Florida is going to be running. What are we running? Split zone. Here we come across in the split zone right here. Split zone here. We're winning, 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 right? On previous videos, we talked about seeing the backs of Florida's jerseys on a zone or any team that runs zone. That means we have turned them towards the sideline, which is what we want to do. And we are giving our split zone a chance to work here out the backside. Now, if our running back can make someone miss, we are off to the races. I mean, look at this, right? This is, I mean, as a running back, you dream of this. And he is all the way out here covering a guy who does not have the football, Play fakes or everything, and ETN is going to run right there, nine and a half yards before he gets touched. Easy pickup. First down becomes first down. ETN having himself a game right here, right? Things would only get even better for him, including on this play here where Tennessee, again, loading the box here, where we got a heavy box. Still sitting too high. Pretty curious. Again, if I'm doing a Tennessee defense film breakdown, I have questions on why you're keeping too high, given the fact that Florida has not even completed a single pass past 12 yards. But whatever. I'm not their DC. They can figure that out on their own. We're going to, again, bring a very late into the box run defender. I think this is just inefficient. I don't like it. I'd rather have my run defender in the box already, especially when I'm getting gashed. I want to fill these gaps. I want to come downhill. I want to make sure that I'm all accounted for. Whatever. Tennessee's not doing it. And Florida is going to take advantage yet again. Simple zone run here. Going to turn into an outside zone. Following the blockers to the edge. And then turning it up here. Now look, ETN has great feet. Mazuka's going to lose control right here. We've lost control. He can make a tackle. ETN's got to beat him. And he does. Quick little steps. Falls down. Then one more guy to beat. Again, whiffed tackle there. Yep. He makes the tackle. But again, ETN falling forward. Picking up on first down about eight yards. Right? That's easy money for Florida. It's everything Billy wants. General rule of football, do not give your opponent what they want to do on offense. Tennessee was seemingly in the first half doing everything Florida wanted them to do. And thankfully, Florida was taking advantage. Second and six, when everything is working, everything is working. And look at this. Focus your eyes right here. All Florida is going to do is something they do all the time on film, right? Which is move Ricky around. We're going to move him around. This happens all the time on film. There's nothing special about this. I'm celebrating it because whatever, take it, low-hanging fruit. But we got two dudes who are really confused. Yeah, okay, this, nah, it's this. Like, okay, all right, cool, man, no worries, okay. And uh, yeah, no one's going to cover him. Hey, you know what? You might want to cover him. Nah, we're cool, no need, we're good. Now we've got this guy coming downhill, who we're going to leave one-on-one, -on -one and hopefully get a block here and score a touchdown if Ricky can make a miss. He does make a miss. Whoop, one-on-one -on -one makes him miss right there with that spin move. And then we get a first down. So again, second and six, something Florida has struggled with necessarily to move the ball. Um, in this game, in the first half, it was easy. Constant conversions, right? Simple plays. First looks Florida wants safe throws. These throws are barely crossing the line of scrimmage. That's not a knock. That's good. If a team lets you throw the highest percentage throws you can for first downs, take it every single time and score every time. High percentage football. Something we didn't see a lot of last year was a screen game. And it's definitely something Florida put emphasis on in the offseason because Florida has rolled out a plethora of screens in the first three games of the season. And this one is going to hit for a touchdown. This screen is really, really good for a couple of reasons. But once again, max window dressing. This time we have Ricky come here only to then turn back around, which is important because what happens with these defenders? We want them all to stay on this half of the field because our screen is going to wind up over here we need as many of them as possible to take that fake and again for the most part they're all going to take it i want you to watch what happens with all of these defenders where do they go ready right here where are they come on tape here we go stop all right everyone that you can see outside of him is out of the play now, a good screen is almost always operated by allowing someone through. Why? You want this quick pressure to make the opposing team feel like the ball is coming out hot and the side you were on is right, and you sort of feed off the chaos. So by timing this exactly right, we slip this out at the very last second. Notice how Mertz is keeping all of his eyes here. He knows if he can keep these defenders over there, it gives this play the best chance of success. And only at the last second does he look at where he knows he's going the entire time 
I mean, this timing is unbelievable by Mertz. I mean, look at this. His arm is reaching for the ball. A millisecond more, this play might be dead. Instead, he's going to take punishment for this, right? Willingness to be a teammate. For the love of the game, play here by Mertz. Take the punishment right there on the ground. And now, unfortunately for Florida, despite having an armada of blockers, we have allowed one through, right? There's a gap in this play design, and that is at Florida, although all these linemen are looking here. Nobody actually blocks the one remaining guy who could ruin this play. And in fact, he has a shot to ruin this play one-on-one. -on -one, he should make this tackle. Again, if you're Tennessee, you're sick about what you're seeing on film right now. You've got to make this tackle. If you do, it's third down and 14 or 15 for Florida. He does not. And now there is nothing but blue jerseys and one defender here. Easy move to make on him. He knows he's got to beat this blocker around the edge. You can't just play him one-on-one. -on -one. And then that guy is gone out of the picture, right? Barely touches him. We're walking into the end zone. Another touchdown for Florida. Everything is going right in Gainesville. The Swamp is at full voice. As you can hear, I gave my voice to the Swamp on Saturday. It's why it's so raspy. And we are in business. Florida taking a huge lead on Tennessee heading into halftime. All right, you knew that Tennessee would not go quietly into the night. It's 26 to 10. I love to say that the most dangerous lead in sports, if any sport, is a two-score lead. So in football, two scores, obviously 14 points. Or 16 points, it's still two scores with two touchdowns and two two-point conversions. Why is that the most dangerous score? Because if a team does score a touchdown on you, you've been in the lead, you're comfortable, all of a sudden there's a lot of pressure on you. The team that's behind by two scores has felt basically no pressure. They've already come face to face with the fact they're probably going to lose. And therefore, that momentum really starts to work against you. So a big drive here for Florida after a long drive by Tennessee. And here is what Florida comes out with. Tennessee now says after halftime, we are sick of what we saw in the first half. We're coming out aggressive. We are going to send everything at you, and we are going to play very close to the line of scrimmage and make you prove that you can pass, which, again, I thought would have been the game plan for any team playing Florida. Tennessee, thank you for surprising me in the first half of that game plan. We appreciate it. And now Florida is going to do something suboptimal. First down and 10, you see nine guys in the box. That is a major green light to gash them with a sexy little pass. Florida says, nah, we're cool. We're going to run the ball right into a nine-man box. And when you do that, typically things don't work out very well. It doesn't work out very well here at Florida, and Florida winds up getting nothing. Second and 10, Florida goes empty. Maybe we're thinking, all right, forget it. Billy's like, you know what? That was a bad play call into the bad numbers. Let's get wild here. Let's push the envelope. Let's get in the 30s on them and put them out of the game. Let's knock them out right now. Let's take their hope. Let's take their soul. We're going to go the screen game here. Tennessee's going to be all over this really nice job here by the edge rusher. He recognizes Mertz is set up for a quick game throw. He stops rather than continues to pursue, makes himself as big as possible, and makes this throw to Ricky as hard as possible on the screen. So hard, in fact, that Mertz misses the mark entirely and pegs Mazuka right in the back. Thankfully, this ball doesn't hang up a little longer to get picked off right here as it almost does. Almost complete disaster there for Florida. Now, assuming that Tennessee cooperated and allowed this screen to get off, you can see this would have been quite promising. In fact, if we block here and block here, we got blockers here, got a blocker there, got a blocker back here. A lot of space. So this play call, I'm going to say, is a good play call. In fact, it really could have worked. A nice play by Tennessee on the edge to read it, sniff it out. And get it. So Billy's still going conservative. He goes empty to show, hey, we're going to be more risky. Tennessee does not buy it per se. However, even with that, Florida actually had something cooking, but never got it in the oven. So third down and long here. And again, pressure perhaps starting to mount on Florida's team. Crucial third and 10. Graham Mertz has been white hot on third and 10. Tennessee right here. Giving you a look uh, with five guys there in the box. On line of scrimmage, who's coming, who's not coming, right? You know for sure it's probably going to be a simulated pressure. And in this case, Tennessee says, actually, it's not. We're just coming. Right? We're bringing all five. We're coming at you right away. We're taking your time away. Florida says, okay, what do you think we're going to run? Hitch route and hitch route and hitch route. And the only route that could have gone for a first down is actually this route. All the others are short of the first down. I'll play out this play for you first. Mertz opens up on the quick game. Timing is off here. You can see this. Timing is off here between him and Ricky, as honestly, it seems to be frequently on film. It's a bit concerning for me how often he's not on time 
with Ricky. And I think Ricky's routes, in my opinion, are sloppy and are just taking too long. Mertz is ready to throw the football, and Ricky is not ready for the football. He's still running his route. We get an extra hitch and a pump. We now move off our spot. Our footwork is now sloppy. We sling it over anyway, and we get it to him. We're short of the first down. Ricky's hitch was always going to be two yards short of the first down. Douglas's is going to be six yards short of the first down. It's third and 10. Are we? I mean, are we just playing for a layup? At that point in time, you might as well just run the football if you're not trying to get the first down. I'm confused. Also, if I am Mertz, I'm coming out in two by two. I'm in two by two here, and this look is the same to me, in fact. Pre-snap, right? I'm two by two, and I'm two by two. Looks like single high. I have no idea what's happening here. They could fan out or not fan out. He could sit here in this, whatever. But the only route I actually have that works is Khalil Jackson on this route here, which, in fact, does wind up being open. Right, He's going to backpedal himself out of the route. This route is here. If he opens up and looks at this route, Florida has a first down. Instead, he chooses to go to Ricky on a route that Ricky never runs to the first down. So question marks there. Florida completes the pass but winds up punting. Tennessee back in business. Perhaps this is going to be a game after all. Florida feels like they're getting conservative right now. You can see their season percentage on third down pretty bad. This game, it's been excellent. We saw the one they just missed. Now it's third and four. Is Florida going to regress to the mean on third down or not? Florida again going to elect to go screen. We went screen earlier. It did not work. We're going to do it again. The window addressing this time is going to be the jet sweep to Khalil Jackson, something Florida has never put on film. I suppose they think that may work, right? So window dressing over here, try to get everyone flowing. The only problem is Tennessee is ramping up the aggression here, and they're going to send only four right? Only four, but Florida is going to allow an interior pressure here on purpose, trying to sell that this play is going this way. They're trying to let that happen. Again, it's a screen. It involves some deception, but he is going to push up the field to get a hand in the window. And then right here as well, another hand in the window. And he actually is the one who basically blocks this ball, knocks it off target, essentially, right? Comes right to the window. You can't even really tell where the ball goes. Ricky, then if he can snag this ball, has a shot of attempting to make this move out the back door. That's the move he'd have to make. Anything else is not going to get it done on third down and four with the way this play is set up. Uh, so Florida winds up not converting this, and they punt again. So Florida's defense here, hanging in there, playing excellent, more than hanging in there, actually really setting the tone for the entire football game and, in fact, really winning the football game for Florida on multiple levels. Uh, but the challenge for them will be met again as Tennessee gets the ball back in a game that, is, again, is increasingly feeling more like a game as Florida tends to be going the route of Will Muschamp, take the air out of the ball, just wait for the end of the game and hope your defense gets it done, whereas Tennessee is beginning to feel like, hey, you know what, Florida starting to kind of look more like traditional Billy Napier Florida on offense. Perhaps we're still in this thing. Florida's defense fresh off another stop. Tennessee comes out, eight-man box, eight-man box in here. We've got about an eight-yard cushion. I'm going to just keep saying it, right? I don't know why you don't just quick game this ball right out here. Put it on film, prove you'll do it. Because if teams want to defend you this way, you know what else you can do? You can then pump fake this eventually. He comes downhill, you nail him, whatever. I think Florida needs that progression. They're not going to do it. They're going to run it. Because again, we're in full Will Muschamp mode right here, right? Despite the fact that we are absolutely loaded in this box with eight men, everyone here is coming in playing run, 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 run. Man, 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 tons of space. We're running, we're running, we're running. We're flying in. Now, Tennessee's had issues before on run fits and gap fits. Much better gap fit here from Tennessee. This play goes nowhere with Webb. That goes somewhere. Picks up about a yard, yard and a quarter. But it's now second down. Second and eight now, Ricky going to motion across. Notice how Tennessee now accounts for this. We saw how they did not before. The safety then widens out over here. So now, curiously, Florida actually with this move is going to get just seven in the box. So we saw him on first down running with eight. Now we get seven because we have two high safeties. And Florida says, well, forget it. We're going to elect to run play action. There's your play action. They do pull the linebackers up. This is good. Right again for Florida putting so much of this stuff on film where they're pulling all the linebackers up and there's so much space. We rarely have a downfield pass to show for it. We're not going to have one to show for it here either. Tennessee has all of these routes bottled up. The best play Mertz has would have been to make a really heady one. Instead, he's going to throw slightly across his body, which is a big no-no for a quarterback, especially with this kind of lead, especially with the, with the play caller who's giving you very conservative stuff anyway. Don't take the risk. He's going to do it. There would have been a tiny window if he threw a better pass to complete this. However, the best move would have been 
to recognize I'm an athlete. He is an athlete, right? He can run. He is, he is dangerous. This is the only defender between him and the first down for a while. He knows, Mertz should know, he has to come get me. And if I'm Mertz, you know what I'm doing? I'm running right at him. I'm literally coming right downhill at him. So he comes to me and then you know what I do? I dump this ball off to Travis Kelsey, right? And hopefully Mertz sees this on film and the next time this happens, he does this. Instead, he is just locked in on this route. He sees nothing else. He's got tunnel vision. He doesn't see the fact this defender has to come get him, which you see here leading to this throw right here, which would have been an easy conversion. And now we're throwing back across the middle of the field with the guy again who is draped, right? Does that look open to you? We're draped on that play. He's going to come through here and make an attempt at the ball, diving, incomplete pass, you know, still solid enough. He's excited about it. He could feel it. He felt like he was there because he was close, right? Hayden Hansen running that route. However, again, if you're Mertz, you want this one back because for Mertz right here, you know he has to come get you. He can't go back with this route. He cannot keep running with this route or you will run, put pressure on him, and then go here, right? Also, by putting pressure on him, if he stays out with this route, you just run. So best option was here. He misses this one. Florida survives, no interception. We head to third down. So from the TV view, you thought we were heading to third down. Except, wait, what do we see on our screen? Oh, the sweet yellow flag button. Wait, what happened? Though? That looks pretty clean. Was it pass interference? What could it have been? Refs get together to talk about it. Oh, we've got a roughing the passer call. No way. What happened here? There's Mertz. Tunnel visioned in, balls away, and then what in the world is this? The WWE flying shoulder? Are we coming off a table here and launching ourselves into somebody? Mertz also with a really nice, uh, you know, oh yeah, make sure you get this call. This is important as a quarterback. Roll around as much as possible. Really sell that, right? It's important. Do it. He hits you for sure. That's illegal. And then pull that hanky out. Tennessee, a lot of self-inflicted wounds. Again, I'm glad I'm not doing a Tennessee defensive video breakdown. That would not be fun. I've done enough of those for Florida in the past. In this case, incompletion that does not move the sticks results in Florida's first first down of the second half. We're in the fourth quarter, a crucial one at that. It would have been third down and eight. Could have changed the complexion of this game a little bit. Instead, we get a freebie and we will take it. After a running play that goes nowhere, we've got second and 11 motion here by Ricky. Again, Tennessee comes out to adjust for it, right? looks like we've got a safety down here in the box, probably in run fit, and we do. They're going to bail out here. Safety over the top here. And then we've got Douglas running into wide open territory. Now, as far as I can tell, Florida does not run any kind of option route, not just the traditional option route where the receiver gets a kind of, you can go here, you can go here, and I'm looking for you man to man, but just an option route in zone where the tree is such that in zone, if he sees, again, a, a corner that bails way off or he sits down, so I'll give you a simple example, if he's in cover two, which essentially is what they wind up being in here. If he's in cover two where the corner stays low in this box and covers anything down here and the safety then stays over top, if his route, let's say, is just a go route by himself, he has the option to then turn that into a corner route or even something flat if he stays down low. Right? It's an option route. The quarterback then opens up, reads the same thing. He sees cover two. He knows he's going to pass that off and stay down low here. He knows his receiver will then run a cover two route. Now, in the NFL, that happens all the time. In college, it happens less frequently. Florida definitely does not do it, as you're going to see here, because Douglas releases, and above this defender is nothing but 20 yards of complete space with a safety that's way off. Mertz opens up, snaps to it right here, back foot, snap, good quarterbacking, good pocket, late rusher here, wind up, deliver a strike, and he does deliver a strike. However, and again, TV cameras make this tough. This defender, as you saw, was down here. He's now peeling back. This defender's over here. As you can see, all of this grass, there's tons of it, right? And the safety is way off. Tons and tons of grass for an easy big chunk play with yards after catch. But Florida's offense so far does not feature almost any yards after a catch. They are rarely catching the ball in space because once again, we are running a hitch route. Something that does not offer any yards after contact. It is a great play by Douglas. Super shorthanded receiver. Good ball by Mertz. We move the sticks. A big moment. Florida's second first down. And this drive is huge because if Florida didn't get a field goal, they'll push this lead to three scores. Florida going to motion Kelsey across. ETN in the backfield, number seven on the jersey, number one in your hearts. Especially in this game, we're going to get, yet again, the old split zone concept. 
except George is going to get completely turned around. Again, his goal really here is to push everything this way in the split zone. That's not going to happen. So fine. If that doesn't happen, you know what you do? You make sure you turn him into the backfield. So you still get a hole. So we're going to get a check on that right there. Check. Take a check. We're going to help and double team kick these guys out, right? Just get him out and let ETN do whatever he's doing here. He'll be one-on-one -on -one versus this guy. We'll live with that. And there he goes. We're going to make that guy miss. Forget it. We've already seen, by the way, that this guy can't tackle. Right, we saw this earlier on ETN. You saw that he kind of rolled up and just nudged him. Well, now he sort of just flops at his feet. Like, hey, man, I'm going to at least dive this time rather than fall on my face later. ETN's like, cool, bro, no problem. I appreciate your service. I'm going to take this thing for a first down and then some and then lay the wood right here for a little bit. Big gain, big first down. Florida in the red zone. Florida now with what should be an automatic field goal, but given Florida's kicking concerns, maybe not. Trey Smack in the game. He has made his extra points. We'll see what happens, but Florida in business inside the red zone here, first and 10. All right, in general in football, we've said this in the pod for years. We'll say it on the film review forever for as long as I do these things. You want to play what the defense gives you. Take what the defense gives you, and that starts with the numbers. So when you see 10 guys in the box, and you see one-on-one, -on -one, and you see basically what looks to be cover zero on first and goal with a veteran quarterback that you presumably trust to do anything, you say to yourself, you know what? There's 10 guys in the box. Okay, I'm probably just going to take my chance with what I would love to be. Just a simple crosser. In fact, in the NFL, you'd get this play almost automatically, especially if they felt at all like there was zero, a little play action, and just run him on basically what becomes a shield cross. So you take him in here. He's going to start here and then level himself up some to give a window out in front. It's, bas it's basically impossible to defend if you have a quick receiver who can get this defender on his back hip. He takes him here. He pushes him up some. You have a throw window here, right? Very, very classic route, typical to shallow wide cross. Either way here, we're going to go with a toss into a 10-man box because that's what we want to do. Why not? It's ETN. He's hot. He's doing well. I think at this point in time, a touchdown or a field goal puts you up three scores and does end the game. But when you see 10 guys in the box, you got a veteran quarterback, we're at home, you know, play championship football, right? Show them that you're not afraid. Now, I think in defense of Billy in this game, this was a coach who needed to win right? Ofer against his rivals last year. He's a human, just like you and I are. He felt he needed to win. I think he tightened up in the second half. I think he was surviving to get to the end. That's all a human element. Obviously, it's very hopeful that in the future, in future years when Florida's team is more championship caliber, or even next week in general, that he takes a quite a different mentality to where to be championship caliber team, you know, you need to put teams away. And part of that is proving that you can score on them. It's not just a one half thing. You can't just rely on one good half to play four good quarters. You trust your offense, you execute. You strip the wrist down when you're ahead by three scores, certainly. But when you get very favorable looks, you execute, you score, you put teams out, right? You don't show teams that you will run suboptimal plays if you're ahead by enough. That feeds the team's ability to believe they'll come back. Billy, of course, himself mentioned after the game, he probably got too conservative. But again, He's a human. He needed this win. Florida fans needed this win. I think he was hanging on tight. And, uh, you know, it's understandable. But in this regard here, Florida misses an opportunity, I think, on first down and goal. They're playing it safe. Let's see what happens on the next play. Second to goal, once again, you've got 10 guys in the box with a single eye safety because Florida's in this bunch set. The reason why the bunch set can be good, you've kind of heard me sort of uh, hammer on this bunch set quite a bit, not because the design itself can't be good. In fact, a lot of really good teams use this. The Rams for one and Sean McVay. It's a concept he loves. Uh, you'll see almost any, almost every NFL team have at least a package for this in here. Uh, Florida runs it a lot, but you know, Florida is not very creative passing out of it. And that's one difference. NFL teams or teams that employ this a little bit at a higher level uh, tend to tend to scheme this very well in the pass game, which then makes it very dangerous. Am I running my passing? Again, for Florida, I think we're a little bit more pedestrian out of this. Either way, 10 guys in the box. We're going to run the ball again here. ETN, there's just nothing there, right? We're basically taking knees at this point in time in the red zone. And I, I understand three scores does matter. This would be a very different commentary if this was to take us from 23 to 26. Playing for a field goal here makes no sense. For three scores, it does make sense. That score is really important. Three scores probably wins you the game. But in my opinion, championship football says if you got opportunities like this with good looks, trust your players, hit it. Third and goal. And in true take a knee fashion here, despite the fact that we are again in a cover zero man to man, I mean, you can run a million concepts up here, right? Any rub you want, any of your favorite man rub routes, uh, see Peyton Manning with the Broncos when he had half an arm left and no neck and he still crushed teams when they did this are available to you here. This is like taking candy from a baby. It should be in fact, super safe because none of these guys are going to get in the way. 
Uh, but you know what? We're running into the teeth of a nine-man box because we're playing safe, and we're going to play the super safe mode where we just have the quarterback keep it. That's extra safe because there's no exchange risk. So here we go. Quarterback keeper, Tennessee all over it. We lose yards. So basically took three knees right there to kick a field goal, which thankfully Florida makes, given what had been happening earlier on. And they do go up three scores. So again, although I've been a little upset with the fact that I think Florida should have gone for the jugular more so, especially in the second half with opportunities presented to them when these numbers are so slanted and teams are selling out so hard, it is mathematically defensible at this stage of the game for this field goal to matter. The field goal did matter because of the three-score rule. I don't love it, but getting up three scores is the goal. Florida will succeed in doing that. Tennessee scores quickly. It's 13-point game now. Again, wondering why that touchdown would have been nice, right? 13-point game now. Florida feeling some pressure. This is a big drive. How does Tennessee come out? Orbit motion. Whole bunch of guys in the box is how they come out, right? Now, we still have too high, so they're playing safe. So they're now trying to say, let's load the box and keep everything in front of us. If you wanted these intermediate routes, you will. Florida says, no worries. We are content here to just run the football, keep it safe. You can see right away, too, that we're keeping the ball safe. Two hands on the ball. Don't fumble. Ball security. Let's stay tight. Gain about one and a half, two yards there and get to second down. All right, third and four. Florida back in the bunch set, motioning into it in 12 personnel, two tight ends again, uh, showing that they're trying to kind of, you know, conservatively see this game out. This game is getting tight, in my opinion. Tennessee says we got eight guys in the box, with the ninth potentially coming in the box. And, yep, there's eight now. We're going to exchange these two. And Tennessee, pretty sloppy here. These are bad angles. Thankfully, you almost never see Florida's defense doing this under Coach Armstrong. Good angle here on the edge. This guy needs to be coming around the edge, not to the inside. By doing so, he exposes his team, which is what happens. All of Tennessee's defenders are in here. And now we are one-on-one -on -one with Montrell out here versus the aforementioned number five who cannot tackle ETN, but he can tackle Montrell. This is a big tackle by number five. A little redemption here from him. He's had a bad end of it on the film breakdown. Montrell's a nice running back. He has great vision, especially on zone runs. Uh, he is not ETN when it comes to making guys miss, for sure. Either way, nice tackle by five. Again, especially after what we've seen, he makes this tackle. It's a good thing he did make this tackle. It sets up Florida for fourth and one. Fourth and one for Florida. Again, I'm really happy I'm not doing a Tennessee defensive video breakdown. I know all of you Florida fans are happy too because we have seen this on our own team for many years. And there it is. Let's focus right here. Fourth and one. Everyone in the stadium knew that Florida was never going to go for this. Think of how absurd it is that Florida would go for this given that we are playing an unbelievably Will Muschamp-like game plan in the second half on offense. Do you think we're going to go for it on fourth and one? In fact, all that player had to do was ask himself, what would Will Muschamp have done? The only problem is he was probably 10 years old when Will Muschamp was coaching Florida, and he doesn't even know who that is, potentially. Who is Will Muschamp? He says, I don't know. But either way, he thinks Florida's going for it. He thinks that Florida's going for it. He's about to make a play of the game. He's going to blow up this A-gap, and he is going to make this play. And there he goes, right? What's great about this is it comes with the clap. There it is. I'll give the hard count some due. Now, again, at your home stadium, you can hard count with just your voice. You hear this in the NFL all the time. But the clap snap works. Florida does not jump offside. Tennessee does. Bam, there it is. He launches. Great work by Florida to snap the ball quickly. He could get back, in which case that would not have resulted in a penalty. He does not get back, and he knows it, right? That's the hall of shame. Fourth and one. I don't want to be here anymore. Take me to the locker room. That's really bad, and that sucks. Nobody wants to be that guy. He is that guy, uh, and that is unfortunate for Tennessee, very fortunate for Florida. Kudos to Billy here for marching the offense out and going for it. It always befuddles me when coaches do not try this. They just sort of assume that the defense will play optimally. Never assume that. The worst case scenario here is Florida takes a delay of game and punts the football anyway, but you gave yourself an opportunity to convert. Hats off to you, Billy. Way to put pressure on the defense and make them make a mistake. 444 left. Florida up two scores after seven more running plays. One that went backwards, one that went positive. It's third and seven. And what do you think Florida's going to do here? Now, Florida opting to spread them out. So we're out of the 12 personnel. Running 11 personnel here now with one tight end, three receivers, one running back. And... 
Take a look at our third down conversions in the second half. Not a recipe for success, but thanks to the defense, it's going to be. So not a beautiful thing here for Florida on third down. In this case, we do get a much more favorable box. In fact, Florida gets a six-man box here. Tennessee actually thinks with 438 left that if Florida converts this, they could basically win the game. Therefore, Florida probably will take a risk of passing this. Tennessee would be wrong. Six-man box. Florida does have what they want. This is a good play call by Billy. Why? Because of the numbers. Football is about the numbers. As much as I love passing the football, I would not throw it every single time if I get a six-man box. In fact, I'd run it every single time. And if my football team couldn't run it into a six-man box, I know my team is going to lose. That's how football is, right? You have to be able to do these things. This is a rare miss from ETN. I'm sure he's going to watch this on film and think, man, if I get this, I might have had a 200-plus yard day. He's got to come in here. This is perfectly executed by the offensive line. Walled off here. Massive hole here. All these zone runs, you want to have a two-way go. He's got the two-way go. There are two defenders stacked outside, and ETN almost never misses this. Montrell never misses this. And they're different runners. So we just talked about how Montrell's not as elusive one-on-one -on -one out in the flat. Well, Montrell never misses this cutback lane. ETN misses it right here. He's going to want this one back. If he hits this cutback lane, he is an absolute business. Instead, he elects to run outside and take on two defenders. And that one right there misses. So he's one right there for one. And then number five does corral him. And it goes nowhere. But that play would have actually resulted in a first down, taking off two plus more minutes of the clock on third and seven. So of all the play calls we've largely seen this half, most of them, in my opinion, have not been necessarily football great based upon the numbers. That play call actually was. And it should have resulted in a first down. And Tennessee sort of gifted Florida a chance to clock them out of the game. Florida does not take it. But no worries, obviously, because Florida's defense is here to save the day and finish off the game. All right, third and 19 now. Florida celebrating. Game about to be over. There's the last run of the game. Again, for Florida, you can, you can just take a knee here. So this is kind of weird too, right? Like this game is over. You could take a knee, run out three seconds. You could punt the ball. You can take another knee and let them try to score more if you want. I would just punt. Trust your punt team. It doesn't matter. There's not enough time for them to score twice. Either way, let's run the football here. Whatever, fine. Run the football. Don't fumble. Okay, there you go. 10 seconds. All right, nine, eight. Now, from my memory, and I don't have video of this, I was on that sideline, though, that Hypo was on, and it looked like the ref asked him if he wanted to call a timeout right about here, and Hypo hesitates and does not do that, and then a couple more seconds go by, and he elects to call the timeout. So Florida's sideline reacts in large part because he does not call the insta timeout. I think he decides then I'm going to call a timeout. And now you see Billy say, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's take a call timeout, which is accurate. Billy notices this, put your headsets back on, come back. That's correct. People are celebrating Tennessee's own team is already running here for the locker room. But Hypo decided timeout it's going to be. Yep, there he is. Timeout. Go ahead. Run your play. Do what you want. Come back out of the tunnel. Let's run one more snap, right? And then see what happens. So we're back for one more play, 4th and 16. Why Florida doesn't put Max Brown in the game? Probably because they want Mertz to be the last one to take the snap. But the game's over, and it's not over. So Florida knows they can't win the game on this play, that Tennessee is going to get the ball back. So why not just put Max Brown in? You can't celebrate anyway. Either way, also, why have Mertz even dance around? Because it doesn't matter. You can't run off all nine seconds. So just take a knee. Right? Don't expose him to an opposing team's frustration like you're going to right here where 21 says, all right, you're in front of me. I'm a little angry. It's been a rough game. I'm going to hit you. And then as soon as I hit you, I'm going to put my arms up like I didn't do anything. Hey, not me. Not me. Look at me. Whoa, I did not do anything. I didn't touch that guy. Look, he's on the ground. He tripped over himself. I did not hit him. Now, in fairness, he didn't hit him really hard, but he still puts him on the ground. Mertz clearly played basketball. He's taken two charges in this game quite well. He sells it. Flags are flying, right? Craziness ensues. We get an old school boxing match going on right here with the aforementioned Mazuka, who featured in some nice stuff earlier. He's boxing. He's ready. I mean, look at this. This is a prime time matchup right here. They got helmets on and everything. We got a huge guy versus like a middleweight. And of course, who is this guy? It's our guy number five, who's been all over the film review, right? Missing tackles, doing other stuff. Well, he didn't want to play with physicality when he was tackling ATM, but now he decides he wants to fight a guy much bigger than him. And we're like Dyson. Benches are clearing. Things are wild. Another weird chapter in the Florida-Tennessee rivalry. Funky ending. 
Uh, thankfully, Hypo, you know, walks up and apologizes at the end and says, hey, my bad. And look, we're all humans. You're frustrated. Florida fans would be really frustrated, as would the coaches be if they took a loss to Tennessee and vice versa. You got to give some allowances for humans, especially if they apologize, which Hypo did. So for me, water under the bridge. No big deal. He apologized. Shouldn't have done it. Because he did that, though, he exposed his players and others to consequences. So, you know, just because you apologize doesn't mean there are consequences. But forgiven, carry on. The consequences are here. No hard feelings. Hopefully both parties learn from this. Billy with like, you know what, a team's frustrated and excited. Let's not put our target quarterback out there. And Hypo, like, you know what, when the game is over, let's exhibit some sportsmanship. Like, it was completely mathematically and impossibly over. No need to call that timeout anymore. It's just not necessary. Let the game end. It's fine. Either way, Florida wins, and that's what matters. Florida gets the dub over Tennessee. Florida does it with a sensationally efficient first half on offense, all while not throwing really a single pass more than 12 yards down the field. Um, Very kind of unusual game to score 29 points in. Florida's defense, of course, contributed significantly to that result. But a signature win for Billy, and that it's his first win over the rivalry. It gives him a chance to build some momentum heading into the rest of this schedule. And of course, it gives us a chance to watch something positive as this ends with a win for Florida versus a ranked team and a bitter rival. As always, I hope that you enjoyed this film study. I look forward to being back with you next week when I'll probably do a quite short breakdown of Charlotte But either way, I will be here. I'm James from the Gator Nation Football Podcast. Go Gators!